Welcome to a new semester at Florida Tech. This year, small changes have been made by the administration as to what's required on your undergraduate syllabus as well as where it should be posted. To help you navigate these changes, the Evans Library Instructional Technologies and the Teaching Council have teamed up to create this awesome tutorial. The syllabus is the most important document for your course. It serves as a contract between you and your students. We hope that this tutorial serves as a guide for you meeting these new requirements. Hi, I'm Chelsea Stripling, Head of Instruction at the Evans Library. We're going to examine the required elements of the syllabus in closer detail. Here are the objectives for this tutorial. We will cover what is required on the syllabus, where to find the syllabus template, and where you must upload your completed syllabus documents. Let's go over the elements that must be included in your syllabus. First, a syllabus heading with quick access to need-to-know information, including your course name, your course codes and subject, including subject and number, and applicable section codes, and the semester. You'll also include class meeting dates and times, and meeting locations, including physical and virtual spaces, for example, Crawford 403 and on Zoom. This is followed by the instructor's information, like your name and contact information, including your office location, your office hours for the semester, and a description of your physical and virtual availability. You might want to include your Zoom personal meeting ID. You'll also include your Florida Tech email address and your office phone number. Next are your course objectives. You are required to have a minimum of three course objectives. We'll have more on the course objectives later. You must also include the required material and or textbook information. This includes the name of the work and the author's name, the edition or volume information, if applicable, and other required materials. If it is required for your course, you must also list any training the student will need to complete or is required to have as a prerequisite. Next are your course grading policies, including at a minimum the submission policies, the methods by which the students will be evaluated, and how their grade will be determined. Be sure to include a late work policy. This is followed by your course attendance policy, including makeup exams and late work policies, followed by where to find extra help. You might consider links to the Academic Support Center and the Evans Library. Next, you will provide all required university policies, including the Florida Tech Academic Honesty Statement, the Title IX Statement, information on academic accommodations, disclosure statement on recording and privacy, and the COVID-19 university policy. To end your syllabus, you will include a week-by-week -week list of subject matter to be covered in the course and an assignment schedule with explanation of any term papers, projects, or other requirements with dates. Now, as promised, let's turn to a discussion of the required course objectives. Here to talk about how to write smart learning objectives is Instructional Technology Zone, Jason Griggs. Hello, I'm Jason O'Neill Griggs from Instructional Technology. And today we're gonna to talk about the basics of course objectives. I review many syllabi and see many course objectives, good, bad, and otherwise. The course objective section tends to be the area most in need of improvement in the syllabi I see. Some people have even asked me, what's so important about course objectives? Well, simply put, a well-written course objective states the knowledge, skills, and or attitude the learners will gain from your course and does so in a measurable way. So what's really cool though is course objectives also helps your students. It helps them to identify what they should be able to do to be successful in your course. It also helps them take ownership of their learning and self-regulate their learning. But as a great bonus, learning objectives also help you. It helps you to facilitate selection of course content and the design of assessments and activities. 
It helps create transparency on course expectation and end goals and to align the course with program and university goals. Now I know this all sounds difficult. Thankfully, there is a smart way to write course objectives. The mnemonic SMART can be used to describe the elements of effective course objectives. So, we have for S, specific, which is what action will be performed. M, measurable, how will success be measured? Objectives should quantify the amount of change expected. A, is achievable, can the objective be achieved within a given time frame with the available resources? R is for relevant. Are you measuring the skills and knowledge relevant to the discipline of study? Are the objectives aligned with the instructional materials and assessments? And T for targeted and or time bound. When will this objective be achieved? Now for course objectives, the time frame is usually the end of the course. One key to writing smart course objectives is to use measurable and observable action verbs. This is where Bloom's taxonomy becomes your best friend. In 1956, Benjamin Bloom and others published a framework for categorizing educational goals, and this framework has been applied by generations of educational professionals. In 2001, a revised version of Bloom's taxonomy was published and is still in use today. This current version uses action words to describe the cognitive processes by which learners encounter and work with knowledge. So, here is Bloom's taxonomy in a nice solid diagram. It has six levels of learning, starting with lower order thinking, rising up to the top level, which is higher order thinking. And there are action verbs associated with each level. And we're gonna give you a nice handout with tons of action verbs for these levels. These are not all of them, but this is just one great document to get you started. So, how to write a solid course objective. Let's start with a formula. Florida Tech is a STEM university after all. So, here's the basic formula. At the end of some educational unit, in this case, it'll be a course, students will be able to Put measurable verb there from Bloom's taxonomy, do something, which is the learning statement. So this is the area which would be great for one of Bloom's awesome action verbs from his taxonomy. But one note of caution, verbs such as understand, know, learn, appreciate, believe, be familiar with, comprehend, and so on are not observable or measurable and should be avoided. The next step is to name the concepts the learners need to learn and how they will demonstrate their understanding. So let's look at a few generic examples. So at the end of this course, students will build probability models to quantify risk to an insurance system. Let's look at a second example. As a result of completing ethics and research, learners will be able to describe the potential impact of specific ethical conflicts on research findings. The third one here. At the end of this course, students will be able to calculate the germination rate of various seeds. And the final one. At the end of this course, students will calculate the magnitude and direction of magnetic fields created by moving electric charges. So, what to do if you need extra help? You can always contact me or anyone else on the instructional technology team. Also, Dr. Matt Ruane, who's the Director of Academic Program Assessment, is also available to review course outcomes. And there are a ton of resources on the web, and we'll provide links to that. So, now that we know what is supposed to be included on the syllabus, as well as how to write course objectives, let's find out where to find the template as well as where to post our syllabus in Canvas. Here to help with that is instructional technologist Anushka Boyd. Hey Panthers, my name is Anushka Boyd and I'm the instructional technologist for the university. I'm going to show you where to find the syllabus template and where it should live within your Canvas course. 
I'll also share with you some tips on how to paste it in the right place and help you get you started on the right track. Once you navigate to the academic policies page, you'll see here that on the left hand side, there's a syllabus template navigation tab, or you can just click on this button right here and that'll take you to the syllabus template. So once you navigate to the syllabus template page, you'll see that the syllabus is laid out for you in a text format. And for your convenience, you can actually click on the syllabus template docx file at the top of the screen and that'll download and you can edit it to your liking. Now that you've created a super spiffy syllabus, it needs a place to call home. Effective January 2021, all course syllabi need to be copy and pasted in the syllabus tab within Canvas. To do this, you'll need to log into Canvas and navigate to the course you want to paste the syllabus into. I'll show you here so you can follow along. So as you can see, I'm already logged into my Canvas dashboard. We're going to play around in this sandbox right here. Now on the left hand side, we're going to navigate to the syllabus tab. In the upper right hand corner right here where the little pencil icon is, we're going to click edit. Now, after you have your syllabus created and it has all the necessary information, you're going to select all of the content, right click, and then click copy. Now we navigate back over to our syllabus tab in Canvas. And then in the syllabus text box, it's empty right now. So you want to click into it, right click, and then click paste. So that way all of your syllabus content that you just copied from the Word document will paste into the syllabus text box. Don't forget, make sure that you click the update syllabus button down here at the bottom or else your changes won't be saved. And there you have it. Now you see that your syllabus is pasted per policy. A common issue is when the instructor of the course uploads the syllabus file only. Remember, per policy, the syllabus text has to be pasted into the text box, not just a screenshot of your syllabus. You can also upload a file and attach it along with the actual text that we just pasted into the syllabus text box. If you want to double check your work, you can always view the syllabus as a student by navigating to the top right corner of this page and you can see where it says student view. It's the little glasses icon and this is what the students will see whenever they click on the syllabus tab. And now we can leave student view and then you're back into your instructor role and then we can keep moving along. Now that we've gone over where to find the syllabus template and where it should live within your Canvas course, let's head back over to Chelsea for an overall review. Thanks, Anushka. So to recap, we started this tutorial with three objectives. What must be on the syllabus, where to locate the syllabus template, and where you must upload your syllabus. We went over the required elements of the syllabus and we discussed creating smart learning objectives for your course. We talked about where and how to access the syllabus template. And finally, we went over how and where to upload your new syllabus document to Canvas. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have questions, concerns, or need additional help, please contact Jason Griggs or Anushka Boyd. Have a great semester.